In programming, we oftentimes need to repeat blocks of code. For example, when we need to iterate through elements of a data structure, or say, analyze each character in a string, or and other sort of iterative processes. To accomplish these tasks, we need to use loops. And in this chapter, we're going to examine the kinds of loops we have in JavaScript. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the while loop. So like what the name might suggest, we are looping through a piece of code while some condition is true. So we're saying while this condition is true, keep on running this code inside these curly braces. So let's do a simple example. And oftentimes you'll see in while loops, we have a counter initialized and declared beforehand. So we're gonna have some sort of counter and in loops in general actually I should add that um, we have a counter of some sort of tracker of that inside a condition statement that will end the looping. So in this case, we're gonna have counter stop at 10 or rather it's going to be nine because zero is inclusive here I should put the semicolon is yeah so we it'll count this what this loop is going to do we're going to i'm going to write it out so it, this code inside here runs 10 times so it goes the counter will go zero one two three four five six, uh yeah zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and it will stop there meaning that it'll be less than 10. So while counter is less than 10, so if it, it reached up to nine, that's the max value it can be, it'll stop the loop. So as you can see, we're using a left variable to track what the amount of iterations we're doing. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna do a very simple example to illustrate how this works. So we're just gonna have a simple console log that says hello to print out to the console. And here we're going to use the incrementation incremental operator, the plus plus. This means that we're going to after. So this means what we're going to do after we say hello, we're going to get the current value counter and then increase it for the next iteration. So it'll go, like I said, from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10. And yeah, so that's how basically a loop works. You could just as easily here. Instead of plus plus, you could say plus equals one or plus equals two if you want to go by twos, which we'll test also. So we're gonna just, but we tend to use plus plus to iterate by one because that's what loops tend to do. They tend to help us see each iteration of something. So let's do that. So I saved my work, right? Yes, I did. Or right, I have my web page open, and we're gonna see the console now. So F12, and you see here actually, here you go. In Firefox, it makes it a lot re more readable for us, and it says it repeats nine times. And yeah, so it's a lot easier that way. So it just cuts to the chase, and it organizes it twice, and it cuts to the chase. Well, actually, here it says the first one and the last one, and here it says it repeats nine times. Because Firefox is nice that way, it will just simplify the console for us. So, and that just shows this nine shows that our iteration worked. And we could even increase the iterations by two. And you'll see it only repeats five times because we only did twice. For some reason, it, I don't know, it was maybe a bug or something. It displayed hello twice. But anyway, moving back, getting back to the problem. So the condition, like I said, is counter less than 10. As long as the counter is less than 10, the code inside will be executed. And afterwards, the interpreter will the interpreter will continue whatever code is below. So let's say console, console log, continue, continue, uh, continue other code. So like, like in programming, and actually in programming, everything goes like from top to bottom usually. And in a loop, we're saying, okay, stop here and loop through that. So loop keep going 10 times and then continue. So let's see that. And after, so after five times, it says continue other code. All right, so if we want to, we can see, like I said, we could start with, if I said that, maybe I didn't. So like I said, um, zero can be, you can start with zero and then go up to 10, 
But if you want, you can actually use one here and actually, but then you have to include the 10th value because we want to have 10 steps, right? And we can actually see the, oops, we can actually, instead of doing it like this, we can actually access the counter itself and have it be used inside our function, inside our code. So we can see, okay, what we're going to do here, basically, if you remember from the post fix and prefix kind of ideas from the second chapter, we can have, we can, what we're going to have here is that we're going to display the current value of the counter, then we're going to increment it right after. So it's this code here is just like writing this counter. We're kind of packing the iteration and getting the value in one. Now you don't have to do it like this if it seems a little complicated. I sometimes don't do it like this because it looks kind of confusing to me from afar, but you might want to. But if you're beginning, just beginning the program, you should maybe break things down step by step. And then when you get more into things, you actually use more advanced techniques and try to condense things to as least the amount of lines as possible. So let's see this. And you see it displays each and every um, counter. And if you noticed here that it actually displayed every value and before it only displayed the same value 10 times. And so Firefox knows the debugger, this is the console, the debugger console, the, it knows by itself that it's just repeating the same thing 10 times, so it will save some room. But in this case, we're working with numbers, and each, no, each time we have a different value, so it'll display everything for us. Okay, so this is displaying the counter, and then incrementing the counter by 1. So it goes 0, increment, then 1, repeat for one and then repeat for the rest. So let's write it with just counter plus plus instead of this line right here. You get the same thing because this is the postfix. If we use the prefix version of this, here we go, you'll get two to 11. You'll get 10 steps, but you'll start from two that makes sense because we're incrementing first so you got to be really careful with these i just i never use in loops i never use prefixes like this i've never at least i've never used them in my programming um experience so i just use it like this okay and another thing we can, oh yeah, so yeah we got that so another thing we can have is we can start from the larger number and go down we can decrement through the decrement through the increments wait decrement through the values decrement through the increment sounds funny so but in this case we would have to go down to less th to zero and in this case we don't include zero because we already have 10 and we're going down 10 steps so you could so if we're counting down for example so we're saying count down from 10 you'll get 10 all the way down to one and if you want to include zero you just use less than uh, greater than or equal to so you use the equal to to include it. Actually, this one didn't work here. Hold on a sec. Um, maybe I didn't write it correctly. Oops, nope. Um, it won't display zero. Oh, that's funny. Oh, there you go. I didn't save it. So yeah, so if you want to include the actual one in the condition, you have to use the equal less than or equal to's or greater than or equal to's. So that decrements it. And if we use, if we use a decrementer like that for hello, you'll have the same effect as if you were incrementing. So let's say less than zero, it's just saying hello, and don't forget to counter minus minus. You'll get continue 10 times. Okay, so a good thing to note is here in the while loop, you need to have the count, some sort of counter increment or some sort of variable incremented based on your condition. Otherwise, you'll have a continuous loop because this will always turn out to be true if you don't change it somehow through increment or decrementation. We'll talk about infinite loops in a later chapter, so don't worry about that. And to conclude while loops, I just want to say that the condition is checked first before actually running the code. So what if we want to actually run the code first and then check the condition? Well, we have the do while loop for that. It's a sort of variant on the while loop. First, we have a do keyword to begin. And in Sublime Text, if you write do, control, space, 
you'll have actually the auto fill do while and you get this sort of code that comes out so what do while does is basically it does runs the code first and then it checks the condition so what's the difference here well before this you might so like I said that's the biggest difference actually I shouldn't ask that question I just answered my own question so we basically are want to run the code first so at least one iteration will be done regardless of the condition which we'll test in a second so let's say console log hello and here we're gonna say counter uh, let's say less than 10 so here we're, we're saying that okay we're gonna display console log while the counter is less than 10 but counters already 10 here from before so if we run it we still get one iteration done so you might find this useful in some applications where you need at least some sort of one iteration to be done with something and I actually I've used the while loops more often than do while loops but these might still come in handy it's up to you whether you should use it or not while loops are more common in my experience anyway and just yeah the big thing here main thing in here is regardless of the condition one iteration will always go through come through you always have one sort of in, in, in um, sort of iteration you might be this might be useful if you have like some sort of initial sort of value and you need to have that displayed regardless of a condition but actually let's actually do this properly and have counter set to zero and then have a counter increment so it's the same idea here you have a, a checking variable a counter and you have your code run inside here and then you have you check the condition so yeah it's kind of like the reverse order of a um hold on a sec uh, let me see let me see I can save it of course there we go so it displayed 10 times all right so there we go let's try to make this something more interesting now so let's actually no I think I think I'll stop there for now this so the video doesn't go on too long so yeah to sum up while loops are loops that run their iteration inside the parent inside the curly braces while a condition is true, checks the condition first, and do while loops run the code first and then check the condition. So it says do this while this condition is true. And with you don't yeah, I don't think you need a semicolon there. And with that, I'll conclude this tutorial.